Greetings, everyone. I, Rajni Kumar, on behalf of APJ College of Fine Arts, Jalandhar, extend a cordial welcome to our esteemed principal, Dr. Sucharita, distinguished speakers from India and Netherlands, faculty, students, and the wonderful global audience that has joined us to Zoom and Facebook Live for the webinar on rethinking design globally. In the past, the designers have come up with innovative solutions to address people's needs. But in this race, there have been ideas that have been overlooked and considered too simple. The pandemic has taught us a new normal. As designers, this is a time to come together and rethink. The webinar will largely focus on rethinking the concept of design, design solutions at a global scale, role of technology, and the changes the pandemic will bring to the design industry. It is an attempt to collect ideas, tips, thoughts, and strategies and the changes the to make the world a happy and a healthy place. Technology has been incredible these days. We could collaborate and communicate with people easier than ever. For this reason today, we have well-known and interesting mix of speakers from India and Netherlands. I accord a welcome to our amazing Dutch designers, Mr. René Prichnenberg, Mr. Hay Smith, Ms. Paula Rennings, Ms. Renat Bohr, and Mr. Budi Lunen. And a warm welcome to our Indian panelists, architect Sangeet Sharma and architect Surinder Bhaga. It's going to be great speaking with all of you today, and I'm sure it's going to be an hour of fun, education, and inspiration. Before rolling into the main theme of the webinar, I would like to share with the guests and the connected audience that APJ College of Fine Arts Jalandhar is a multifaceted and one of the finest institutions of the region. Here we share a short video of our institution. Without taking much time, I am pleased to introduce today's first speaker, Rene Pijnenberg, an exemplary designer and an outstanding speaker who excels in the field of interior design, architecture, exhibition, and retail design, and has executed numerous innovative projects on hospitality, healthcare, and retail through his studio, Pijnenberg. He is also a senior lecturer at the prestigious Academy of Art and Design, St. Jude's Breda. Rene believes in creating new horizons, collaborating and crossing disciplines for creativity and development. It's a great pleasure to have you with us today and you bring back the memories of the collaborative work we have done in the past. Rene, please uh, share with us how do you feel being part of this webinar and also question, answer the big question for today, why do we need to rethink design? Over to you. Well, um, good morning uh, from Breda, dear colleagues, dear students. Um, it's good morning for us here. I hope you're all well in these worrying times in the first place. And thank you for your creative initiative uh, and invitation, Ranji. Um, it's with great, great pleasure that we of the Why Not Cooperation participate in the webinar and um, be present at your college uh, again. Um, before we start, um, I just received this morning um, the sad news that the artist Christo passed away yesterday in New York City. 
He was one of my heroes and guides. I like to honor him and thank him for all his great and brave work. And may he rest in peace. I thought it was a good idea to start with this sad message. Well, to come to your question now, um, why do we need to rethink design? Um, I put some thoughts on, on paper and said, well, for some time now, we know we are not doing well if we look at the bigger picture. Increasing world population, exhausting resources, global warming still rising, consumptions never so high, a gap between those who have and those who have not growing and growing, air pollution and no shortage of plastic soups to name a few. Um, sure, there is a growing understanding for this and there are some hopeful initiatives and projects, but global, we are still going down. Not a pretty sight, not a good enough track record for our future generation. We let this simply happen. Also, we as designers had a share in it. We are 100% responsible. That's the first reason why we should rethink design, simply because we designed not well enough. Furthermore, we have to rethink our way of living together on this beautiful planet. And more fundamental, we have to rethink our understanding of the word profit. I believe profit without taking into account the impact of our acts for people and planet can no longer be ethical accepted. Scientists, politicians, writers, artists, manufacturers, designers, clients and consumers, we are all role models and we have an obligation towards this economic rethinking. We need to cooperate and to make use of each other's know-how and experience. So that's the second reason why we should, from my opinion, rethink design, opening up our cooperative methods as designers. Do I sound too pessimistic so far? Um, well, that's not me. Um, there are lots of things to learn from now, if we want. You can see the Himalaya. We can see fish in the canals of Venice and bicycles across Paris. Um, so how do we move on as designers? Well, first of all, I think designers should turn from a service-driven attitude, I will give you what you ask, towards research-driven. We develop what we really need. Challenge your assignment, challenge your client, Challenge your imagination. Secondly, designers should emphasize ceaseless on interaction, debate, and cooperation with users, client, and industry. Work closely with them, both as employed or self-employed designer. Thirdly, designers should link their critical research and design to technology and innovations, to look for new ways to do things simply better or more efficient. It's not that hard for the smallest object to the biggest project, a designer can always simply ask himself, how does my design improve the life of people? What's in it for our planet? And how can it contribute to real profit? So please dream, look for unexpected opportunities, research, ask questions, be critical and honest, develop, test and communicate almost like an activist about the impact and usefulness of your designs. Spend time and effort in detailing to make your designs work and last. Use beauty and poetry as a tool instead of something cosmetic and let nobody stop you. As long as you know, why am I doing this? And please make good fun don't take yourself too seriously, but act. One of the things this COVID pandemic uh, might learn us, I hope, is the difference between what we really need and what we can do without. So let's stop inventing, designing, producing, and selling useless things, things we do not really need, things others have done already better, things that are no benefit for people or planet. Let's make a better work, being creative, surprising, 
and responsible. I know you can't win every little battle, but the least we can do is try again and again. So why not turn design together? Thank you. Thank you, Rene. That was a very clear and a crisp answer. I would like to add that, yes, we need designs that are accessible, uh, like they are sustainable, they are affordable, and they carry a social worth. So thanks for that. Moving on to our next speaker for the day is Hay Smith, an impeccable creative thinker who works in international and national communications, network in advertising, design, and multimedia. Hay is a senior art director and content maker for brand and product development and owns the company Go Other Directions in Breda. He's also senior lecturer at the reputed Academy of Art and Design, St. Juice Breda. We welcome you, sir. We have collaborated many times before for international programs, but meeting again on this platform is an experience in itself. It's actually a delight. My question for you is, on design innovation, do you think creativity and innovation are one and the same? Also, can you share what kind of innovations and smart solutions do we need today? Over to you, Hey. Hello, I think, yes. yeah. Hey, Can you cancel? I don't know how it works. <laughs> we are able to hear you. Hey, is it working? Working here. We are able to hear you. Please go ahead. Yeah, That's shall I repeat my question? Yeah, I, I had a question already, but I, I don't see my picture. Okay, but we can yes. see your picture. You're looking very smart. Okay, thank you. So I can start. Yes? Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much for introducing me. I'm a little chaotic type. I'm not, I'm not so very structural than René. <laughs> but um, I am very honored to be here again with you all together. The, all my friends in India and Netherlands together. I'm pleased to give you an answer on what is design innovation, what we need today, for example. I give you a little few things, uh, but I really like to do on, uh, now in the Netherlands with our students, so I can share our, my inspiration with, with them. So central uh, is the mindset, turn the world around. That's the th we have to do that together. But we do that on a different way. I'll, uh, what I'm doing all on, on the, in the academy is uh, try to make sense, even starting with nonsense. <laughs> Just don't be afraid to make nonsense. Nonsense is a lot of lovely things to make, to create new possibilities where you never think about it. Yeah? So sense making uh, is a new interaction for individuals in a social surrounding. So the new social design system, that makes sense. So if we try to make a new social surrounding together, then we have, then we have opportunities for our new designers. We have to work together, Matt. We have to be critical. Also what Rene says in, in the first talk, critical design is one of the debates we like to do. So we learn our students in, in Breda and in Netherlands to think critical, to start a new social debate, to change the mindset and starting with, with nonsense, for, for, for example. <laughs> That's really a social system hacking what we're doing on the moment. So we learn the students to, to found something in the world and we have to make the, the system getting around and try for a new, different view. Critical design is based on friction found with, uh, in, a, in a system, such a way your critical design makes 
the vi fiction visible. And that we learn. We, we don't make a solution, but we like to make uh, something visual that we get a debate with the world on a social way. By pro proposing the last chains of a relationship between stakeholders, we have to, the relation between stakeholders, we have to talk together. So we have to work together also maybe with plants and animals and nature. We can learn a lot of the nature. We can learn for the systems of the nature we can learn. We can, we can learn of the animal world and the plants of the system. Even the trees talk to each other. Please talk with the nature. <laughs> and it look, looks nonsense, it is not nonsense. It's really good to talk with the nature and, and learn from, for example, systems of trees and etc. We can make a new world together and we can learn of it. So that's what I'm like to do. Also, a speculative design is what if visionaires. Don't be, a, don't to be to, uh, afraid to dream, to dream of new visions, even it is speculative design. So speculative design is something maybe far away in the future, but, but don't be afraid, afraid. Please, designers in all the world, dare to dream, dare to dream. And, and uh, get in, in, in contact with your uh, stakeholders and your uh, big companies, etc. Design friction is, an, is, an, yeah, is a kind of a new social law, uh, I think so. Friction design is, is a force to fit, make different combinations. We did, we did it also in Yalandar, in our international why, why not uh, uh, happen things. Look here. <laughs> uh, uh, we, we make friction design, so we, we put two worlds together. That for example, take the nature and take the high industry and make a new combination and you create a new bio thinking thing. Huh? Um, so this friction design and force to fit and combinate the world uh, is the lost and found in the new world some opportunities. Imagine the new change and new rules. Huh? Don't dare to dream about new rules. How you can do that? We try to in introduce turn design with why not make it happen. <laughs> and uh, last, I have to say something to whole the world. Uh, have a nice day, Vache and Hoppa. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you so much, Hey. Uh, it was good to hear from you. I agree with you. Innovation is about you know, creating a revolution, doing things out of the box and uh, making things that probably may be useful and practical in the future. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. Our next speaker, Mr. Sangeet Sharma, is a celebrated architect, an author, poet, musician, educationist, founder of A3 Foundation, and above all, partner architect, S.D. Sharma and Associates Chandigarh, a reputed and renowned firm. He's widely published and featured in prestigious journals in India and abroad. He's a winner of many awards in architecture and has earned the title of being in the hot hundred architects of the country. It is a privilege to have you with us today. And so I would like to add that uh, you have been a constant support in, to the department ever since we organized the first international conference on sustainable architecture, that was the first in the region where you supported us. And now you're here to support us to organize the first international webinar of the department. Thank you so much, sir. And my question for you is, design styles in the past have varied from being aesthetical to functional to minimal, and now it's the time for essential. What do you think is the need of the hour and what can we do to make the world a better place with improved quality of life? Over to you, Sangeet, sir. Hi, Rajni. Uh, thanks a lot for a very elaborate introduction. Uh, am I audible? Everything fine? Yes, sir. You're completely audible. Great. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, I'm, I'm grateful for you to invite me on this webinar. Uh, Dr. Sucharita Sharma, the principal, has been very kind always, inviting me to this prestigious organization. 
thank you rajni for considering me uh, thank you for this lovely panel and uh, the whole concept is 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 is, is beautiful because uh, i've been to this in, uh, this institute uh, multiple times and uh, the whole faculty the students are fantastic and i always tell them that you guys are the winners they have been bagging awards in maitri foundation every year and uh, the product designs the designs are superb so hats off to apj always i'm always uh, thrilled at you at you people um uh what is relevant today is uh, is rethinking i think the whole topic which you have taken today rajni and the, the faculty the principal rethinking design is 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 superb and hats off to reni and hey what, what a magnificent presentation you guys make amazing and uh, you have stolen all our words both of you have spoken everything we do we have not left anything to us anyway that, that was fantastic uh i think a lot of knowledge uh would needs to be uh, precipitated i hope the listeners will go back home with a lot of information and knowledge uh thank you uh now for your question yeah yes rajni it's time for the essential indeed everything else is gone and we are in times we are where it's the basic essentials are, are the part of the need now the world always needed the essential actually and uh, to begin with and and uh to begin with we needed a shelter right we wanted to have a protection from the vagaries of the weather it was a hut when that shelter expanded to an abode uh where the families were surviving uh that abode became a house house became something which was a, a thing to be shown when the egos came in it, from the home it it was left only to a house so as we grew from a hut to abode to house to home the essentiality was decreased but the question is what do we need now now we don't need greed we do not need the non essential not just because of the covid situation i think designers always wanted to give something which was required for example this very pen or 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 or, or this the, the the mobile it's it's function its handiness its design is so good i don't find if 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 this was remodeled to anything else it would it was a disaster so designers essentially aim for the essential it is the greed or something which is uh, which is implanted by our ego to show or or the showbiz which spoils the design back to essentials my suggestions are we eliminate ornamentation we always did i believe in modern architecture we, we, and we live in chandigarh we believe in essentials so orna, ornament ornamentation which is non essential is removed visual friendly is is what is required aesthetics friendly is what is required that aesthetics is a part of the function sometimes we designers go overboard and concentrate only only on the aesthetics i think function and aesthetics will go in hand in hand a uh, special requirement now the distance has distances have been increased because of the covid situation but not visual distances so you, we have to maintain our spaces in fact better our working space has to look more beautiful than before because now we are communicating with our eyes we did we did not touch each other or hug each other because of certain preventiveness okay but now the beauty has to be through the eyes our eyes should look beautiful and the space should look beautiful because that is the source of communication we reflect emotions we re we reflect our eagerness in our designs because that was we want to create power to please our designs will be now will have power to please power to comment power to communicate power to relate and reliability so i think the best thing would be to make things which have all these powers to relate leave the excess 
and we have the essential in every aspect of life. And as, as he said, Rene said that everything starts from the designers. So it's our responsibility to do it. Thank you very much, Rajni. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, that was truly interesting. I think people have already started to live with the limited means and use yeah. technology to their advantage. So in a way, if we go cost friendly, it's going to benefit in the future only. So thank you so much, sir. Uh, moving on to our next panelist, architect Surinder Baga is a renowned name in the architecture fraternity. He is an architect, researcher, and an author par excellence who've completed an impressive range of architectural buildings, projects of urban design, interior design, and landscape through his distinguished firm, Sakar Foundation Chandigarh. He has been conferred with a number of prestigious awards in architecture. His works are published in many journals and newspapers of repute. Thank you, sir, for your guidance and motivation at all times. Gracious welcome to you. And so my question for you is, as you know, the pandemic has imposed drastic adjustments to our lives. Design will no longer be only about form and aesthetics. Do you think planning at city level or neighborhood level will also be changed after this? What is the inspiration from history to remember for a post-COVID world? Over to you, sir. Uh, thank you, Rajni, ma'am. Thank you so much. First of all, I would like to thank the management students and the wonderful faculty of this uh, prestigious APJ College of Fine Arts, Jalandhar. We live in this part of the world and we know that this is one of the best institute we have in Punjab. And a special thanks to the principal ma'am, Dr. Sharma. She has given us an opportunity to share our views with the, with the faculty and the students. Regarding your question, if you look at the history of India's uh, architecture, you will see that uh, India was ruled by Mughals for nearly 230 years. Then uh, we had a British Raj, British period for nearly 100 years. And after uh, independence, in 1947, we, we experienced uh, the works of uh, Kabuzie for nearly two decades. In the entire thing, one thing is very common. They designed buildings which are climate responsive, which are sustainable, and they have taken care of the wind direction, they have taken care of materials, they have taken care of uh, orientation, everything they have taken care. But uh, over the years, we have lost that sense and we have started uh, designing glass clad buildings and aluminum clad buildings. If you look at Chandigarh, Chandigarh got 35% green areas. And in Kolkata, we have 2% area is only green. So in cities like Kolkata, we are inviting trouble. We are inviting uh, pandemics like, like this COVID-19. In my way of thinking, we can uh, take inspiration from history because we have a very rich history. And uh, we as architects should design buildings, design cities, design neighborhoods, where we can get a lot of light, ventilation, eco ecosystems to be protected and uh, we should, uh, as uh, Sangeet sir has said, we should design buildings to suit our needs, not our greeds. And uh, at a neighborhood level, I think uh, we as planners or architects, we need to provide uh, more uh, healthcare facilities. Maybe in our dispensaries, we should have uh, isolation rooms. In our apartment blocks, we are required to have isolation rooms so that as and when any problem occurs, we can take care of our patients there and there only, and we will not uh, uh, crowd our uh, uh, bigger hospitals. With this note, I close, thank you. Uh, that was indeed very impressive and remarkable, sir. 
I agree that people will become sensible and connect more to nature. Use of local materials and coming of context into architecture may widen. Thank you so much, sir. Moving on to the next speaker, we have Renat Bohr, an exuberant graphic designer, researcher, editor, writer, and organizer of lectures and symposia at national and international level. She's also senior lecturer at the Willem de Kooning Academy in Rotterdam, Netherlands. Her studio, Renat Bohr, has won many prestigious awards, such as the German Design Award, the European Design Award, and International Design Award. It's always a pleasure to team up with you and your associates. A warm welcome to you, Renat. My question for you is, there is a significant opportunity right now in the research and development of new materials and finishes for future products. What kind of materials and strategies do you think are going to be more popular in future? Over to you, Renat. Uh, thanks a lot uh, for this opportunity, Rasni, and of course, uh, Madam Principal. Uh, it's really an honor to be uh, on this webinar. Uh, we just finished a book project, which is called Designing Lightness. This is the book. Structures for Saving Energy. We work together with the writers, design critic Ed van Hinten and engineer Adrian Beukers. Beukers. This book provides a solution for saving energy through the reduction of just about everything. Lightweight materials, reducing the amount of energy that you need to make something and saving transportation costs and polluting by producing locally. Learn from the past, for example, in the period, period that we did everything only by men and women power and learn from nature to create smart solutions in the future. They also introduced the use of composite materials while designing housing and everyday products. This way of designing is resulting in a tremendous reduction of waste and heavy transportation. To communicate the message to composite materials as graphic designers, we created a composition existing from multiple layered foil prints on the cover, as you can see here. To communicate this message for a large audience, we decided to make the book simple and fun to read with a lot of examples guided with images. And I can tell you there are really a lot of images in it. So well, we also translate complex information into readable and beautiful designed infographics. When conceptualizing the bigger idea of designing lightness, the urgency to advocate the positive outcome of going lighter resulted in a bold decision to make the book locally, local and literally greener. Green, the fresh symbolic color of natural phenomena, phenomena and the sustainability in, in a sustainability world. The binding factor throughout designing lightness. By choosing a local printer and environmentally friendly paper, the textual and visual outcome of the book fits to this content. So the book itself is a good example of ev that every designer can play a part in rethinking design. Thank you. Thank you so much, Renat. That was amazing work. And I personally have seen your books and no one can match your book designs. I agree that uh, we need to have, use cheap uh, natural materials, environment friendly paper for these books and all. Uh, and certainly we need to have a futuristic approach as well. Thank you so much. Okay, next we have amongst us the very talented educationist and designer, Budi Lunen, who's senior art director at Notomato advertising firm Breda. 
He's also a teacher at Zua Art School, China, and is a master when it comes to design, conceptual thinking, strategy, and branding. He has traveled worldwide and often termed as a creative globetrotter. Warm greetings, Guri. It's wonderful to meet you on this platform, and I'm sure very soon we shall be meeting for a joint program in person also. Now, my question for you is, how technology is shaping the future of design? Has it helped or hindered the industry? It's sometimes frustrating when technology is not doing what we expect it to do. Do you think technology impacts creativity? Over to you, Budi. Hello, uh, everybody. Uh, thank you for the introduction. I'm delighted to be here doing this webinar. Uh, hello to all uh, the students there and uh, to all the, uh, my colleagues all over the globe. If you go back on, um, on your questions, actually, it's a two-parted question. So if you go look first to the first half, is how technology is shaping the future of design and has it helped or hindered the industry is Technology helped very much the future of design. Connect, connecting the world by getting your inspiration, looking for other cultural opportunities and the way of producing. Like during the industrial revolution from the horse to the car. First the elite have eventually the, first the elite have the invention of the car, but eventually everybody got the, uh, the, got the car. It uh, helped the economy and society to get in touch and connect with each other, push the world in general forward. Better economy is always an improvement of design, whether it is in aesthetics or in engineering improvements, such as driving on electricity. Especially the last one, it helps also for the better world, clean, for clean environment, uh, for humans and nature in general. One downside is on technology nowadays, the world is so fast and the innovations follow up rapidly, a design made today can be outdated next year or even next month or next week. So the pressure to keep up to date is high, too high if you ask me. Sometimes it is good to take a step back. No question for, for time, money, or even risk of stealing ideas, designs, and patterns. If you could look to the second part of the question, frustrating when technology is not doing what we expect it to do. Does technology impact creativity? Um, the improvement of technology goes rapidly fast. So does ideas and creativity. If you have a bright idea and it's not created yet, it will be, in the following months or years, but it prevents, but you have to prevent somebody maybe stealing your idea or somebody came up with the same idea. So it's better to have a rough version of it and keep improving. The, the iPhone, for example, is a very uh, good example by, of one of the best events of the 2000s. However, Steve Jobs' problem was simplify all the tech in one phone. During the launch of the iPhone, it, the iPhone itself was far from perfect. So they keep evolving every year, every year, in, in keep the phone, the two, the three, the four, et cetera, up to the, now the X phone. Um, the, f the frustration of today is patents, and it will be to, uh, and the will to share those ideas because of financial motives to make, to make money out of it. If you don't watch somebody, if you don't watch to somebody actually steal your idea, I think people are not driven by money, but it is. But it will be a common good if you have help somebody out to share your ideas. If you achieve much better when when it comes to innovations, to be open for designers, inspirators, clients, and stakeholders, etc. Thank you. Thank you so much, Woody. I agree, agree with you that technology is going too rapidly. Products that come today are outdated in a matter of days but for growth, we have to keep going. Thank you. Finally, we have Paula Rennings, an outstanding and talented film director and researcher at PNP Registers Breda. She's directed numerous corporate films, educational programs, television programs, and documentaries. She's had the opportunity to work with some of the finest broadcast companies and producers of the country. Welcome to this webinar, Paula, and it's great to be meeting again after years. Paula, my question for you is, since you have a rich experience in the advertising world, can you please share how advertising and marketing is evolving around COVID-19? Over to you, Paula. Okay, Ranji, thank you very much for this special introduction. 
and for having me on this meeting. Very special to be here. Uh, about, uh, I'm getting apps, but about uh, the marketing, yes, uh, of course, the uh, advertising marketing world immediately takes on uh, the opportunity here in the Netherlands. And, but some of the companies are struggling very hard because of COVID-19. Uh, they are completely out of business and in the survival mode. So they don't are busy with marketing or whatever. But there are companies who uh, immediately uh, take on the opportunity and they promote the, the quiet we're living in and the importance of social contacts and uh, they will make it possible. So they using all the opportunities there are. But for me, marketing is the end of the chain. And I would much rather like at the bigger picture, like Renee said before, because what COVID-19 clearly shows is that we live in an absurd world. We should think about that before we want to sell and promote even more. We should think about what, the fact that we're totally unable to make long-term decisions. In the past weeks, we saw a lot of images of people at the intensive care unit uh, with COVID-19. And those figures were published in the news. But how many people die from lung cancer or air pollution? Uh, about two weeks ago, there was published a, a figure that uh, 300,000 people worldwide died of COVID. That would say a hundred thousand people each month, but on average, seven million people die worldwide from the effects of smoking and air pollution. That's a, that's about six hundred thousand people a month. The difference is the visibility, the long term and the short term visibility, and that's also counts for the environment. For years and years, the world is being threatened by to perish by our consumption behavior. We, we in the Netherlands, we live in a small, densely populated country, and our government uh, could not justify it economically that our biggest, biggest airport should not continue to grow because that would cost jobs. Now, due to COVID, the airport is closed and it costs a lot of jobs. But the people who live in that area enjoy fresh air and a wonderful day in the garden without every four minutes an airplane coming over their heads. So. Before Corona, making money was the main motivation on which decisions we made, what products we were made, what was economically important. But during Corona, all these arguments are from the table. So, but I'm afraid that they're going to be back very soon, as soon as they have the pandemic under control. So what I would like to... Uh, ask the makers of design is we, we can contrib contribute in two ways, both professionally and personally. Personally, I know from experience that it's very complicated because you also have to earn your money in a society that hasn't changed yet the way you would like it to change. Um, but what we can do is try to create awareness of what we are doing. Imagine that you get an assignment that is absolutely doesn't contribute to making our planet as sustainable, more sustainable. See if there's room to ask your client questions about the assignment. See just the little things you can change or even better, if possible, use your experience to improve your own environment without getting an assignment first. Our personal, uh, personally and as consumer, we also can have the power to change things. We are persons, we are designers, but we could also consume less. We could make conscious decisions of what we need and don't need. That's, that's what I wanted to say. Thank you very much. Thank you, Paula, for sharing this information with the audience. Advertising has always been a strong medium to create awareness among the people, and you guys are doing great. Thank you. Uh, moving forward, we have a short video specially created by May, Hey, and Paula on the theme of the webinar. May we have the video, please?
That was beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Rene, would you like to share the idea behind the video? And can you also share your tips with our students and how to go for a good design? Over to you, Rene. Yeah, well, um, yeah, we like, we like to do something um, to make it clear that this is the moment that we should rethink the way we are working, the way we are um, making our designs. So the idea behind this, this little movie is to set up a sort of worldwide awareness about how can we turn the thinking behind our behavior and our designs. So hopefully um, a lot of your students and, and a lot of my colleagues um, will send in a uh, animated GIF with their turn word, the word which is important for them personally to, to spread the news around that it's time to think differently. Um, we will we were going to uh, collect and present in an, in some way um, uh, all the words which will come in, and we will try to make an analysis of it uh, to see what people really uh, want at this moment to um, to change. So that's what we uh, are going uh, uh, to do with it. So hopefully, please send in uh, one word. No sentences, no big stories, just one word which you think is very vital to keep in mind. So that's the, the idea behind it. And um, I'm still a, a very strong believer in the 10 principles of Dieter Rams, and, and some of my colleagues were, were making references to it. Um, but maybe we can add something. Maybe we can uh, do a little bit better than, than the 10 we have. Now, for making good design. I think a lot of you um, um, said uh, very strong things about um, the awareness. Go for quality, challenge your client, challenge the brief, uh, don't uh, take no for an answer um, and cooperate. And, and, and keep in mind that the work of a designer is not to make um, the life of people harder or worse, it's meant to, to be, to make it more positive and better. So um, yes, we, we shouldn't change the pen, but as long as it is made out of plastic, which is spoiling our world, I think we should rethink even those uh, 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 essentials. So, um, yeah, be aware of what's the impact of the work you, you, you make. That's, I think, is the most important um, issue. Thank you, Rene. I have no words after you say something. You're so crisp and clear. Thank you. And definitely we'll be sending our ideas to you very soon. All my students will be sending. Thanks. Okay. Now, now we move on to the questions from the connected audience and we have plenty of them. Uh, the first question, there's a question for the people from the advertising world. I think Budi can answer. Uh, Budi, can we have you? And uh, there's a question, it's a long one. There's so many designers in the industry today with a range of job titles like UX design, UI design, visual design and service design. And it's becoming harder and harder to understand what they do, how they are different from each other. In fact, it has become difficult for students to identify their discipline. Can you give your opinion that do we actually need all these titles? Over to you, Budi. Yes. Um, I think there's a uh, first thing. There's a lot of overlap. It's just kind of designations or functions for certain people, and it's maybe too much. I think um, even in my branch in the advertising and design, you have, for example, concept thinkers, graphic designers, art directors, but they do actually basically the same thing. Maybe it's in the details the difference. Um, uh, it is very blurry nowadays. Also in the branches in between, like a digital agencies doing advertising work and advertising agencies doing digital work. So it's very mixed up. Um, I, would I would rather have 
overall groups and drop those titles. To make it more simple, like you have creativity concepts, whatever it might be, just like video, digital project, social design projects. And then you have an other group is more realization, production, execution, just like filming, designing, programming. And there's a third group that doing everything like uh, concept thinking and for example, uh, uh, video making and de editing, for example. Um, I think um, in, those, in between those groups, you have a lot of cooperation and uh, it, I better think in those groups, teamwork is more important instead of having uh, the title. And the title is more focused on one person, while you need the team to make the best work. Use the talent of the individual person and use that in a group to achieve much more. Thank you. Thank you, Buri, for the answer. That was quite clear. Okay, moving to the next question. We have a question for architect Sangeet Sharma. So uh, the student wants to ask, what is the role design plays to maintain a stable living? Over to you, Sangeet, sir. Uh, the question is uh, uh, on stable living, design and stable living, right? Yeah, I yeah. think my, my questions are all, are all uh, interrelated. Um, design, design is fundamental uh, to, its, uh, 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 to its usability and durability and longevity. Design gives us the freedom to execute our desired function and actions. Design provides us the ability to establish relationships between ourselves and the spaces. Design provides definite space for definite initiative. I think design defines, it defines everything around us. It defines itself. And uh, unless it does that, design is not design. It assumes its built-in potential to locate itself. I mean, just imagine um, in a living room, there's a, there's a position for the lamp, there's a position for the, for the, for the easy chair, a table. It, the design defines itself. So the usability is preconceived, it's inbuilt, and its location. Uh, when things are and objects are in place, I think the, the living is naturally stabilized. Uh, if electricity is fluctuating, life is fluctuating, right? Uh, especially for the audience. And uh, so I think the design must not be fluctuating. It, it has to be stabilized and that's what it calls for it. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. I completely agree that designs need to be safe. The surroundings need to be hygienic and uh, they should be economically viable. Thank you, sir. Uh, then we have another question. Uh, we have a question from uh, the head of our department, uh, Madam Rajni Gupta, and she would pose the question to architect Surinder Baga, sir. Over to you, Rajni, ma'am, for the question. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, sir, my question is that we are living in an era of advanced technology. And you know, we are losing our traditional uh, technologies and materials almost in every field, be it architecture, clothing, or food. But we cannot go back to our grassroots 100%. So how do we balance the both? Okay, thank you, Rajni Gupta, ma'am. Uh, you said that uh, we have uh, left behind our traditional techniques and materials and clothing, etc. Yes, sir. I think uh, we have faltered there only. We have made a mistake by leaving them. And uh, if, if I quote example, you know, my You're not. So you're not audible. Not audible. Just a second, sir. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I was saying that we have forts in India which are as old as 800 years made of mud, but our country has not uh, established any institution to do further research on the material. But the corporate world, the governments, everybody is doing research on concrete. Likewise, we, we do not have a 
any institute which is doing research on bamboo. What I suggest is that a uh, lot of uh, research is required to be done on old materials and we need to club technology with ancient wisdom, traditional techniques and materials. And we can, uh, nowadays we can use green materials. We can use local materials in order to maintain a balance of today's life. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, thank you, sir. Um, I completely agree. Traditional mannerism, passive strategies, local materials are going to be the latest in things now. Uh, now, uh, I request Madam Principal to kindly put her question to the panel. Over to you, Madam Principal. Yes, it is not a question. Basic, basically, it is my curiosity to know whether it can happen or not. Anybody can answer this question. This taking into account the current situation affected by COVID-19, where we need to stay indoors most of the time. And this situation may continue for some more time. Like human mind constantly craves stimulation. That is why we love being out in nature with its endless variations of sights, smells, and sounds. As designers and architects, do you have any plan to make our interior environments just as healthy and just as stimulating? Anybody can answer it. Uh, Sangeet sir, if you can take up the question and answer it. Sir, you have to unmute yourself. Uh, I'll be speaking only in the regional context, which Mr. Baga has very uh, fantastically put forth. I think you address this uh, address this, uh, this question to somebody else. It will be better. Okay. Anybody else who could answer this? Uh, Baga, sir, or Rene, could you address the question? Um, yeah, I, I, I did not very clearly understand the question because there was some some background noise um but um i heard the first part and i think one of the the issues uh, now uh, at this time of of covid is yes we should take care of the wellness of students in a very different uh, way because um um Students are living on a little in a little room. They are living with their parents, uh, uh, remote from the school, and um, it's not so evident and not so simple to stay positive. So that's why our academy has a task force, especially on all issues concerning to wellness. And there is another task force who is dealing with new um, uh, teaching uh, protocols and 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 IT matters. And there's an, an, another commission who takes care of facilities. How do you, because what, that's one of the biggest issues. Um, um, how can students make use of facilities, especially students that are not working on a digital way, like um, the sculptures uh, making three-dimensional work and that sort of things. So um, they figure out ways to, within the protocols of COVID, to, to let students um, come into the workshops uh, on a, a very scheduled basic uh, basis. So that sort of things is taken care of. And I don't know if, if that completely answers your question, but uh, I think that's that's a thing uh, to to um, to address at this moment. Um, thank you, thank you. Rene, can you just say a little more about how could we uh, beautify or make uh, sanitize our interiors and make it more? Uh, you know, friendly during this COVID time? Yeah, well, um, um, well, uh, for, for instance, uh, uh, as we do it here, the, the schools are closed, um, but they make, they could make exempt, uh, exceptions for uh, the workshops. So now students send in their, their work, uh, their, their, um, well, they, first of all, they, they, they communicate with the uh, workshop assistants. Uh, about what they want to produce. So that could be either a detail or uh, something to, to, to 
make 3D prints or laser cuts or whatever, or even small pieces uh, made by the, by the assistant himself. Then they order it online and then they come uh, uh, to collect the things. Now, some students have to do it on their own and they get a specific time slot um, uh, to come to the academy, very precise, let, let's say from three o'clock in the afternoon till uh, uh, five o'clock. And they are the only one uh, apart from the workshop assistants, which are in the building. So it's, it's a massive administration. You can imagine if you have more than 1200 students, um, you have to administrate that. Uh, but that's, that's uh, again, uh, thanks to, to, to the enormous uh, um, work people can do in, in times under pressure and help by uh, IT uh, uh, things, um, they are able to do it. So um, yes, it's very precise. It helps students, that's, that's the other part of it. It helps students to think more ahead about what they are up to. Uh, instead of just going to a workshop and see what happens. No, they, they have to be clear on what they want to research. So for some reasons, it, it puts also a bit pressure on the students to be clear about their intentions. Thank you so much, Rene. Okay. Rajli, I have one more question yeah, to ask. Yes. Uh, again, keeping in view the present situation, what are the new roles where designers will be able to add tremendous value? And what are the additional skills that our budding designers should begin to hone? Anybody from the panel? Um, Sangeet sir or Rene or Hey, anybody? Uh, Baga sir? Repeat the question. Yeah. They repeat the question. Yeah, Ahanji ma'am. Yeah. Keeping again <clears throat> the present situation in mind, what are the new roles where designers will be able to add tremendous value? And what are the additional skills that our budding designers should begin to hone? Um, ma'am, I think, yeah. Ma'am, I think that uh, time is coming that uh, we uh, architects and planners and interior designers, we should be fully equipped with the uh, knowledge, knowledge about uh, antibacterial fabrics, antibacterial tiles, antibacterial upholstery items, and, and uh, antibacterial paints, etc. So, so uh, these, these things will be, will be in the market in the near future. We, uh, we as professionals should have proper knowledge of these items and we should be able to implement those, um, uh, execute those materials in the market. Um, and we should be able to convince our clients that by using such and such material, we will be saving the human lives. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Rene, you would like to add something? I want to add one small thing. Uh, I think one of the skills uh, which are very important today is to ask critical questions. Don't think, uh, don't take things for granted. Even the most simple uh, things you think to know, you can ask questions. And then as Hey was uh, switching out, try to combine uh, that thinking, that uh, asking questions to things which are completely uh, 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 other, the other way around, and then new possibilities will come up. So, but asking questions, real critical questions, that's very important. Can I, have, uh, can I answer? Uh, I do actually agree with Rene. Um, as my experience in the advertising is, is uh, do not always do what the client actually asks to you because they actually come to you because you are the authority on design or advertising or whatever. And uh, we always ask extra questions and then maybe you can actually see what they actually need. So for example, when, when, when a client is coming towards us and want to actually make a video and we actually listen and then we actually ask some really hard questions to them but, uh, and, and actually questioning the, the, the briefing itself, then 
uh, then maybe we we hear or we listen and then we see no you don't need a video so you actually need a kind of social campaign because you uh, it is better for the audience you want to reach so that that's uh, it's up to us take that responsibility to uh, to actually guide your client and and uh, and people to towards an assignment Yeah. Yes. Thank you. Uh, that was nice, Rudy. Thank you. Uh, okay, moving on to the next question. We have a question for Renat Bohr and Dr. Gagan Gambhir. He'll be asking the question. Uh, thank you, Rashina. Uh, Renat, there is a question for you. Uh, the pandemic may force world to rethink globalize. Care, compassion, and cooperation among the global community. That may become the new mantra. Like, what is your take on this? Well, this uh, COVID-19 lockdown period gives artists and designers uh, a unique opportunity too, to connect with each other and their audience in many different and unexpected ways. Forced by the lockdown, we are also more easily connected on a global scale than ever before. Just consider how amazingly fast this webinar was called into life. It probably wouldn't ha have happened uh, if it weren't uh, to the current situation. It is these kind of initiatives that raise the awareness amongst the next generation to take on this message of care, compassion and cooperation. Next to that, it seems like all of the sudden we can visit museums and lectures online all over the world just mm. because of the lockdown at this moment. Most of these things were of course already possible a half year ago, but for some reason it just didn't happen. So cooperation and connectivity really seems to have risen in importance to, for current artistic and design projects. Thank you. Uh, so um, I guess the main thing is that awareness and the technology will be the main two things we need to understand. Yes. Yeah, but also that we are now more connected worldwide. Yeah, we should be. We have yeah. to be. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Renat. Okay. okay. Uh, thank you, Renat. And uh, then we are, again, uh, Rene, we have a question for you. It is again by one of our faculty members. Mr. Rajesh Kalsi, he would like to ask you one question. Hello, Rene. Hi. Ah, it's pleasant to meet you here. Yeah. And it's a question uh, on behalf of, uh, of a teacher or a, you can say parent, a student or industry. It's like, uh, how effective is this, the present online education system in during this lockdown, socioeconomic lockdown, especially you can say design education? Yeah. It's how, how effective? Well, I think how effective it will be, um, well, we have to wait for a while. Um, it's, I think it's too early to judge. Um, what I see in teaching, um, well, I had to, I had to um, change my way of teaching um, and, and we all have to adopt it. Um, and up until now, I, I see some pretty good advantages. I, I, I already said that it, it looks like students are better prepared when they come into contact with you. So, because it has to happen in the moment of contact. And that, that seems to be more effective than in a live uh, situation. On the other hand, as a teacher, you probably know this. Um, if you talk to a student, um, well, you're as good as, as the moment. You give them some advice, you go over to another student somewhere else in the classroom, and then you, you keep on thinking, oh my God, there's another thing I want to add. And that delicate process, that is more hard if you do it online. So yes, there are some advantages and, 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 and there are some, I think some disadvantages. Mostly from coaching point of view, well, you can do a lot online, um, but I miss the tap on the shoulder. I miss the the um, uh, the hug of a student if if he's doing something great, or or be there if uh, a student is in crisis. 
like it doesn't work and he has to overcome this moment all alone so that's sort of the worrying part of it so yes i do hope i i do hope we are going a little bit back to the old system and we see each other again uh, in some way and that we um, uh, well preserve what these new uh, ways of teaching um, will bring us as extras so i think it's it's sort of the best of both things which will might occur the, the way to do it yeah actually design is like a baby it has to be born <laughs> you yeah. can't keep on thinking about it can cannot imagine on the laptop yeah. well and, and it's, it, yeah and, it, it, sorry there should be a touch there should be a touch yeah that, that, that that's, especially for if you make a, 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 a not digital work you you like to touch the form you like to touch the product you like to touch the materials and that's something you can't do uh, via the internet so uh, that's important that we make room for that in the, in 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 the fourth quarter thank you thank you rene is a very nice answer i've talked to you thank you rene um uh, we just have time to take up only two more questions and uh rajni rajni yes, one sir. i'll just take one sentence i there's something which we are missing yes, uh, uh principal ma'am rajni and and uh, uh, ankit who asked me questions about the about the product design uh everybody has answered beautifully what we need today is an which compels implementation design which compels implementation you can design something very nice but how will how will how will you make people implement it but at the end of the day it is the human beings it is the people who have to implement it so i feel everybody's common answer to everybody thing is the design must be implementable it it must it must necessarily compel particularly say in indian conditions or asian conditions where people are a bit careless i mean so the design has to be in such a way managed that it compels to follow it's like a rule it's a normal rule you know we you know what is uh, what is good and what is bad but we, we we if we don't do it we are fined so unless there is a system to fine in the mind i'm not saying with the money in the mind or there is a fear factor or there's a compulsion the designs will not be successful that's what i want to say it must compel implementation thank you very much very true sir design needs to be implemented and last year only we started with a new course in our college on product design development and entrepreneurship in which we not only take up design but how to actually implement it how to actually put it into practice that is also taught that is uh, that was an attempt to do that oh, fantastic It should be okay uh, now i have a question for hey um hey um is it possible to bridge the gap between the past and the future designs <laughs> that's nice nice question uh, the past is the still the still thing is not changed at all is the big idea you must have a big idea is it the past or the future that's the first thing another thing is you have to be you have to be you have to be also patient and and drive and another thing is uh, what i'm believing in uh, and we and we, uh, so rene did it also with mr brown <laughs> the, the, the points of design but there is some it is also very critical but we we train our students at the moment with critical problem solvers so there are more problem solvers by critical design and that we push now our new students to, for the first year by critical design and create a social debate about it and later on we make the product and maybe that's we can create new roles i think so i hope we can do that we, we learn this period this is with the lockdown that we create new roles to think about rethink again exactly rethinking is what we need to do yeah okay coming back uh I'll, to the last question because it's trending on facebook and i would want uh, one of you to answer uh it's a student's question by sabya batra 
Sangeet sir, she has also won an award in your A3 Foundation. And uh, she wants to know, when is the right time to join industry? How important is it to do masters? If you only could answer, and then we can have an answer from the other side also. I'll just take a, a second. Uh, yeah. Masters is absolutely uh, important because it uh, widens your mind and widens your horizon. But if she's asking whether it's important to do masters in interior design or architecture, I think it's all the same. It's all about design. Uh, but uh, if there are no masters specific courses for interior design, then uh, I think architecture and interiors are interrelated. It hardly matters. And uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's creativity. It's, it's one's own imagination which matters. Papers don't work. But yes, if you can do, do masters, do it. Thank you. And so basically, she wants to know when is the right time to join industry after graduation or one should do masters first and then go to the industry. Which one would you suggest? I personally would suggest that you work somewhere and then do the masters, because otherwise, if you don't have the feel, the look and feel of the profession, uh, having a degree is, is absolutely is paper. So I think working for a few years with somebody uh, and then going ahead for further knowledge, it also tell you in, in what direction you want to do your master's in. I mean, I mean, unless you know, you want to pursue your higher studies in which, which field, you will not know unless you are working, working first. So my personal feeling is that you work and then you do your master's. Thank you. Bhagat sir, would you like to add something on it? So unmute. Yeah. I think I think masters is must in present circumstances, depending upon students' own uh, situation. Uh, as Sangeet sir has said, she can join maybe after some time, or if the circumstances allow her, she can join join maybe now. But masters is must for, um, before starting the main work. Thank you, sir. And uh, Budi, can we have a response from you also for the same question? When is the right time to join the industry? Um, uh, well, I, it, it depends, actually. It depends on the person. Um, I've heard some, uh, I should have heard some answers about uh, getting a master or should I do not. Um, from my experience is, um, do whatever it feels good for you. Of course, you have to finish your study and then go into the industry. From my point of view, is experience is the most important thing you, you need for the industry. You have the feeling for it. And, and then develop yourself uh, afterwards. Um, uh, well, uh, I know from people who got even, not even have a master, not even a bachelor in design, but are in the industry like advertising. And, I, and, and they have so much more experience because they... Do, do, they do not fit into the school system, but eventually still um, uh, still have a kind of feeling for the industry, and they are very talented in that. And if you if you actually trust them and give you uh, all the energy they, they need, then eventually they can actually accomplish amazing things. They they, they need to open for it, uh, uh, master or not. So it depends on the person. And from my point of view, is of course finish the study you uh, you're doing now and then do uh, gain some experience. That's the most important part. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Budi. Thank you for uh, all the panelists for these answers. And uh, Dr. Ashok Ogra, we have with us. So would you like to ask something to the panel or say something? Oh, thank you, Ratna. Thank you, Dr. Sucharata. It was wonderful listening to, to uh, the panelists, such an informative session. And I particularly like the emphasis on sustainable materials. Uh, and I wonder whether during the COVID-19, uh, one of the one of the reasons, one of the factors that lead to, to community um, spread is uh, holding the handle, which are invariably made of steel. But can we have simple wrapping of bamboo in future, I'm saying, so you know, it takes care of. And I like uh, Mr. Surrender's uh, example that we need to study local materials. I mean, concrete, so on and so forth is fine, but uh, why not study mud? I mean, as simple as that, why not study an institute for uh, uh, bamboo studies, you know, and similarly, Rene made a point about pen. I mean, uh, 
nothing has changed in pen except the ink um, from the ink pot to, uh, to what you have those uh, fillers now. Uh, and why can't we have the body of the pen as uh, as made of bamboo. I mean, you know, so I think the critical thing is that uh, as somebody said, creativity inspires ideas and I think design inspires change. And I think the future now belongs to designers. And sometimes I wonder whether the panelists could throw a small brief light, particularly the Indian panelists, why is it and in most of the elevators, all the buttons are so low that one has to bend so much and invariably there is no light and it takes you so much time to decipher what is the floor one and what is the floor five. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for these words and joining us today. It was a real privilege for us. Now I request our esteemed principal, Dr. Sucharita, to share her views and experience of this webinar with the audience. Over to you, ma'am. Yes. <clears throat> my privilege to convey my sincere thanks and gratitude to all our worthy panelists for sparing their precious time and for sharing their thought-provoking views on the much-talked-about issue, rethinking design globally. Conversations amongst the panelists and the question-answer session were quite fruitful, providing the clarity and understanding on the topic under discussion. Dear friends, we all know that today we sit on the cusp of another revolution. COVID-19 has changed our lives drastically as the most crucial global health calamity that has forced us to rethink, to set our priorities, our social and environmental responsibilities and our economic standards. Besides changing our perception, the pandemic is also going to change our work environment. Our challenge is how to accommodate ourselves in our workplaces when we restart working our offices, keeping in view new social practices, health, hygiene, and safety. These spaces may require different security measures and may require more frequent and intensive cleaning. Designers and architects have an important role in influencing how the spread of infection can be reduced in the built environment. So with these words, I once again thank you, our learned panelists for joining and enlightening us. I'm grateful to all those also who joined us on Facebook and YouTube in very encouraging number and supported our endeavor. Last but not the least, I am also thankful to the design department, especially Rajni Kumar, who has taken the initiative to get all the stalwarts at one platform and provided all of us an opportunity to listen to the insightful thoughts of all our speakers. My special thanks to Mr. Ashok Kogra, advisor, APG Institute of Mass Communication, New Delhi, uh, and our respected mentor for joining us for this webinar. Thanks all once again. Thank you so much, ma'am, for these kind and encouraging words. I express my heartfelt gratitude for your guidance and inspiration and motivating us to try new platforms that turn out to be wonderful experiences in the end. Thank you, Dr. Ashok Ogra, for joining us today. It was a real surprise for me, and <laughs> we are really happy to have you here. I express my sincere thanks to our esteemed panelists from India and Netherlands for collaborating with us in such a short time and being the most amazing speakers. The way you took us through your incredible ideas, understanding, knowledge, and experience was just fantastic. I also convey my thanks to Mr. Vikram from Department of Applied Arts for creating the beautiful webinar poster. My thanks goes to Mr. Ankit and Mr. Varinda Sagu from Department of Multimedia for taking care of the technical arrangements. Dr. Anjana and her team for helping in media coverage and publicity. Department of Design and above all, my lovely students for the continuous support. Thank you for all the people who spared the time and joined with us. 
Good luck and have a great day. And thank you, everyone. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you.